<clears throat> In this video, I would like to just do a, a brief, short summary of Akkadian grammar. Uh, this can be found in my uh, on Google Books under the title "A Short Inductive Akkadian Grammar," <clears throat> based on the epilogue of Hammurabi's Code, uh, with he biblical parallels to the Hebrew Scriptures, and with New Testament application to Christ. This is found, by the way, on Google Books under my name, Dr. Gary Stads. What I'd like to do on this short video is just look at the Akkadian basic conjugations and do a summary. I have done that. It's available basically on uh, Google Books under that title. <clears throat> so if anyone's interested, <clears throat> they could find it on pages two and following. So as we look at Akkadian, we're using the verb parasu to cut uh, in Akkadian and looking at the basic stems, just like in Hebrew, we have Cal, Nifal, Pl, Puel, Hifil, Hophel, and Hitpael. Now we're going to look at the Akkadian stems <clears throat> and uh, how we understand it just briefly. First, you have what is called the G stem and the G preterite, which is parallel in Hebrew to the cow uh, perfect. And that would be iprus, I-P-R-U-S, from parasu. That would be he cut. Secondly, we have a D preterite, preterite meaning past, which is like the Hebrew PL stem showing intensification. An example of that would be uparis. You have your U vowel and the doubling of the middle radical. Just like in Akkadian, uh, you have, uh, let's say, shiber. You have the doubling of the middle radical. He, he shattered the dish when he dropped it, something like that. Uh, so you would have the doubling of the middle radical in Akkadian as well. Then you have the sheen preterite. This is like the hifil in Hebrew showing causation. It is the causative stem and will normally uh, contain a sha after the prefix and before the root. An example would be who shopped this? Uh, he caused to cut. Notice the U, indicative of a preterite. And then you have the sha, infix, before pris from parasu, the root. Then we have the N preterite stem is like the Hebrew nifal stem, indicating a passive. That would be ipparis. <clears throat> Historically, from in paris becoming ip paris, where the in of the in stem by progressive assimilation has caused the, the p to double. And that would be uh, the passive. He was cut, or it was cut. Then we have the t infix called the gt preterite stem, it indicates reflexive action or reciprocal action, like ipparas um, would be an example. Notice we have that T infix, ipparas. And the tan infix indicates an iterative, me iterative meaning, like iptanaras, he, <clears throat> he cut repeatedly or reiteratively. Then the two tenses in Akkadian then are preterite, which is past, like iprus, and the present and future, which can be illustrated by ipparas, 
Again, using parasu, <clears throat> the verb, we double uh, the middle radical, ip paras, or the middle consonant, in the present or future. The verb parasu is the infinitive meaning to cut, which is the model verb that we are using to talk about <clears throat> uh, Akkadian grammar. And so let me just uh, summarize what I've said. This is going to be a very short uh, video. Iprus is the G preterite, he cut. Uh, and notice when we're looking at uh, vowel patterns, you have a U vowel, Iprus, he cut. Uh, where Hebrew would be Yiktov, O, Iprus is uh, the Akkadian. And notice the U thematic vowel pattern in the G, preterite stem. Ip paras, he will cut. Here you have an AA thematic vowel pattern in the G present or future with the verb parasu, uh, to cut. The D, uh, in summary, U paris, notice in that we have the doubling of the middle consonant and the U vowel with an AI vowel pattern. U paris, the D preterite, meaning he cut repeatedly, something like that. And U paras would be the D present, future or present. Uh, <clears throat> which would note the doubling again of the middle radical. And it's very similar to the Hebrew diber, where we would double the bait in diber. Uh, he spoke. Uh, and notice in Akkadian, we have the AI vowel pattern. Um, the future is uparas, he will cut. Again, uh, you have the A vowel and the AA thematic vowel pattern, uparas. Then you have the causative stem, <coughs> which in Akkadian is called uh, the sheen stem. Ushapris is the sheen preterite. He caused to cut. And notice it has an A-I vowel pattern, uh, and you have sha as the infix, u uh, he caused to cut. It's parallel to the Hebrew hifil. And then if we're, if we're doing a parallel with Hebrew or the Aramaic sha uh, and then you have u again, is the sheen present future rendered he will cut. Notice you have an AA vowel pattern in U Shapras. So he will cut. And U Shapras, you have the AI vowel pattern in he cut. Um, and this is parallel uh, in Aramaic to the Shafel stem or in Hebrew to the hip field the sheen stem in Akkadian. Ip paris, notice we have is the in preterite, he or it was cut. And again, you have the AI vowel pattern and uh, he cut, uh, excuse me, he or it was cut. So the in is passive, just like the in stem. <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, in Hebrew, uh, uh, which is past, just like the nifal, I should say, in Hebrew, which is passive. So, it paris, he or it was cut. Uh, notice the AI thematic vowel pattern. And then, it paras would be an AA vowel pattern and uh, with the 
A and still the doubling of the P because it's with the end stem. And he will, uh, or, or he or it will be cut. Note the original in paras, or in paris, became ip paris, that is the in p changes doubling to a pp, uh, to two p's. It reminds me, again, of yintain in Hebrew becoming yitain, where the in assimilates into the tav in the imperfect of natan, causing the doubling of the top. Note the I prefix again in the third masculine used in the G and N stems and the U prefix used in the third masculine of the D and Sheen stems in the preterite and future, present future tenses of the D and Sheen stem. The N stem as we said, is like the nithal in Hebrew. Yishaber, he will be broken, comes from yinshaber, and it goes to yishaber with progressive assimilation of the noon into the sheen, uh, assimilating and causing a doubling of the sheen. Hence, in S in sheen in sh becoming sh sh or uh, in <laughs> uh, yin shaber becoming yish shaber. So again, uh, the n stem in uh, Akkadian has that uh, progressive assimilation, just like we have in Hebrew in the nifower n stem. This is a very brief review of uh, the verbal stems in Akkadian and doing some comparison with Hebrew. I hope this helps. You can find this summary in, what, in our work on a short inductive Akkadian grammar based on the epilogue of Hammurabi's code found in Google Books. If anyone is interested, We've also done a similar grammatic summary of the Hebrew uh, grammar, of the uh, Greek grammar, and we're going to do uh, finish up the Aramaic. We've done part one in the Aramaic grammar. Just enjoying, at this point in my life, uh, reviewing what I learned in my studies. I hope this help is helpful to someone.